Well, hello class. Once again, welcome back to Viking Guitar University. As always, I'm your esteemed instructor, Viking Guitar, or you can call me Eric. Um, today we are going to be covering MIDI in Reaper. Now, MIDI is kind of a, a big musical topic in the first place, and there's a lot of stuff that's specific to Reaper, and it's, it's something that we could do a whole video series on in and of itself if I was that knowledgeable about it. Unfortunately, and fortunately, I am not. I have a solid working knowledge of how MIDI works, um, specific to Reaper, and so we're, uh, we're just gonna kinda go through what we can. This is gonna be a longer video, and even, even considering it's gonna be a longer video, I'm probably gonna miss a few things. So, if I miss something, Please be forgiving. If there's one crucial piece of information that you're looking for and this video doesn't cover it, please just send me an email or write it in the comments or something like that, and I will do my damnedest to make sure that I answer it for you. So, um, first off, what is MIDI? MIDI is a, uh, it, it stands M-I-D-I, it stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's, it's basically a way of controlling electronic instruments. And uh, what MIDI does is it, uh, it's a way of easily controlling that just through data points, through a series of numbers. And uh, this is data that can be con uh, directly programmed into most DAWs or can be controlled with an external piece of hardware, like this EMU X board that I'm using right here. So um, the type of data that includes um, it's note length, uh, the velocity, which is the hardness of the hit, whether it's like, you know, if we we're doing drums, if it's a soft snare hit or a heavy snare hit. Um, so we got note length, um, the note itself, the velocity, and then a whole bunch of control change information. Now, this is called CC stuff. And basically what CC data is, is just a whole bunch of variables. It could be the, um, the vibrato of the note, or the, um, it could be controlling some onboard effect for the MIDI instrument, like delay or, um, something like that. The most common CCs that you're going to see are uh, volume, um, pitch bend, and then modulation for a modulation wheel. So um, this is all just kind of getting ahead of ourselves. Right now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk first about if you have a MIDI controller, an external thing like a keyboard, um, how to set that up through Reaper, and then we're going to deal with how to use it in Reaper. So if you've got an external thing, um, it probably has its own software that you want to make sure is installed, any drivers for it, and then make sure it's plugged in and turned on and then open up Reaper. Um, the reason I say to do that first is because I've had experience, at least with my emu board here, that if I plug it in after Reaper is open, Reaper will not recognize it. So, now that Reaper is open, we need to make sure that Reaper knows um, that we're using a MIDI device. So what we want to do is go up to Options or pref and uh, Preferences here, and then scroll down to this audio segment here, and under MIDI devices, we're going to see a whole bunch of different ones, um, depending on how much you have plugged in. Sometimes it lets you use your soundboard as one, like it's got my Line 6 tone port there, and there is my beautiful little Emu Export 25, and that's enabled. So you want to right-click it and go to Enable Input, and then uh, MIDI Outputs. MIDI can send and receive data. That's not something I really work with, but you want to just make sure it's enabled here, too. So click OK, like that. And now what we want to do is we want to uh, be able to actually make sound with this keyboard or whatever we have. So right now there's nothing. We have no tracks or anything. We're going to double click in here to add a track. And we are right off the bat, we are going to arm it. All right. So track is armed. Now we're going to click on the effects thing here and we're going to load a virtual instrument. Now, when you have your plugin forms here um, or your form, yeah, form's a good word for it. And this you might recognize is where we load all of our other effects like chorus and delay and stuff like that, but it's also where we load our virtual instruments. And uh, that's a different type of effect. It's not really an effect, it's just kind of how Reaper handles it. So um, if you download virtual instruments, uh, you can put it in uh, the same folder that Reaper looks in for the effects. And right now we're going to use one that is a favorite of mine um, called TB Peach. Now, this is available. The link is in the video description, and it's going to be floating on the screen here for a minute if you want to go download TB Peach. It's kind of a fun little thing to do. It uh, it, it replicates um, old-school NES, you know, Nintendo sounds. It's not a pure synthesis of them like um, a lot of people that do real chip tunes use. So if you're watching this and you do real chip tunes, and as soon as I said TB Peach, if you start curling your lips and snarling, I'm just using this to demonstrate MIDI data. Back off, buddy. So we load our instrument, and now 
this track, whatever's on this track is going to be run through TV Peach, but it's not going to be audio data like a recording of my voice or a guitar line or anything like that. What it's going to be is the MIDI data that gets interpreted by this TV Peach program. So what we want to do now is we, uh, we've got the track armed, we've got the virtual instrument loaded on it. We want to go down to the send here, and instead of having an input like we would from our tone port or from a microphone or something, we go down to input MIDI. We want to select the device we want to use, in this case our Emu Export 25, and we want to go to all channels. Now MIDI instruments can send notes on a variety of different channels, which is a way of isolating between instruments. Like uh, some virtual instruments here, not the Peach one, but uh, some orchestra instruments let you play multiple orchestral instruments at the same time, like you know flutes and string sections and all that. And uh, in a situation like that, we would be using different MIDI channels to control the different instruments. So it's a good uh, a good idea to just tell it to read all the channels from the board. That way, you can change it up later. If you don't have an external um, um, MIDI controller and you still want to be playing MIDI in real time instead of just plugging in notes, you can use this virtual MIDI keyboard, go to all channels, and if you go to view, uh, go down to virtual MIDI keyboard, it brings this up. Um, and you can control it with this thing instead of an actual keyboard. So we're going to close that. We're going to set the input MIDI export all channels. So now we've got the track. We're going to label this Peach. We've got the instrument loaded on it. We're telling it to read data from the MIDI keyboard. But the problem is, as you see, I'm hitting, I'm hitting keys here. You might hear it. And you can see this little red meter here that shows that it's getting info, but we're not hearing it. And that's because we're not monitoring the input. So the last thing we want to do is go to this input here, um, make sure it's recording input from audio or MIDI. The input is MIDI through the export 25. And then this little play-ish looking button here it says record monitoring off. If we click it on, now when I hit keys, we get sound. So once again, create a new track, arm it, add the virtual instrument to the effects thing, set the input down here to be MIDI, your instrument in all channels, and then make sure the recording input is set to on. Now, if you're not controlling a, um, if you're not controlling MIDI through an external thing, like a MIDI controller, like this keyboard I'm using here, this Emu, um, if you're just plugging in notes, you don't have to do any of that. All you're gonna need to do is just create a new track, you don't even need to set it to record, just load the virtual instrument on it, and then we're going to plug in the uh, data points manually using the mouse and keyboard here. But first off, we're going to look on how to do it using an external controller. So at this point, we can uh, open up our Peach thing here, and we see it's got different variables just like uh, any any electronic instrument will. This one, um, it's got two banks. One is uh, the different sound file that we're going to use, like this is the blaster sound. And then we can click through it and hear different ones. And it's got uh, these little controls for it here, like the portamento and uh, the pan, left, right, center-ish. And then crush is a built-in big crusher, which kind of just degrades the sound. And then down here, we've got uh, settings about uh, the amplification. Now, these type of settings you're going to see in a lot of different virtual instruments, so we'll just go over um, what they do right now. First off, the attack setting is going to be um, how quickly the sound happens when you press the keyboard. And I'm not talking about a delay like you hit it and then the sound happens. I'm talking about how slowly it ramps up to full volume. So if the attack is set short, it happens instantaneously. But if it's set higher, it kind of swells in. Um, the decay is going to be uh, how quickly it decays, basically. Uh, sustain is how long it sustains. Release is after you let go. After you let go, how far it releases. This doesn't really apply too much to this instrument. And then this is the overall volume, like that. So anyway, it doesn't really matter too much uh, for this instrument. Anyway, I'm just messing around now. <laughs> I just want to find a sound that I want to use for this. Let's say we want to record something with this now. Same thing we do when we record an audio line. We want to start by setting our tempo. And we'll just do, let's say, 130. Turn on our metronome. Right-click on it. Turn up the volume a bit. And just hit play to listen through. There we go. Now, we're not going to play anything super exciting with this because I'm not the most accomplished keyboardist. Um, but 
at this point, all we do is we hit record and then we start playing our notes and uh, we'll see what happens, okay? So we're hitting record. We're gonna wait two bars and then we're gonna do. And then stop it, save it, and there we go. So let's zoom in here and show exactly what's happened here. So what this has done is this has recorded those notes. And it's done it exactly when I play it. Um, this isn't perfectly lined up to the grid because it's a result of um, my human playing, but it is representative of exactly when I hit those notes. Now, what we can do is we can double click on this thing here, and we can go in and we can see these specific notes I hit and the timing involved in them and all that stuff. We're gonna look at the screen more later on. We're gonna close it for right now. So let's say we've got this thing. Um, we've got a few different types of recording modes we can use for this. Um, so let's go back to the very beginning. We'll turn snapping on. And if we click here, we go down to record MIDI overdub replace. Um, there's a few different uh, methods we could use. And the first one we're gonna look at is overdub. Now let's say we've got this thing here and we're gonna set it up uh, to be at the beginning. And we're gonna record again and play a different set of notes. And I'm gonna show you exactly what happens. Okay, so now what's happened is it's recorded this uh, second set of notes and it's playing both of them at the same time. And it sounds horrible because I'm just kind of playing different notes. Um, so that's overdubbing. What it does is it just adds it to what's already there. Now, if we go to replace and then we record, what it's going to do is replace all these notes. So now, since it's been in replace mode, when we record, it erases everything that was there and it puts in this new line. Like that. So that's overdub replace. Now touch replace plays everything as normal until we actually play something and then it'll replace those parts. So let's just play uh, record through and do it again. What it did in this case is it recorded, uh, when I added these upper notes, the do, 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 it added those to it. Like that. This last style here is latch replace, which means it's going to play along with what's here already until I start playing on the keyboard, but then when I start playing on the keyboard, it's going to record those notes over the other ones and replace them. like that. This is the new segment right here that I recorded and you can see it not only added them, but it got rid of everything else that was there. So those are our different recording modes with MIDI. Now one other thing we can talk about here is uh, there's a term for in MIDI called quanta quantization, quantization, quant quantizing notes. And basically what quantizing notes is, is if we look at this specifically, you can see that my horrible inadequate keyboard playing has meant that I've started notes early and they've run past the end of beats and it's basically just not, not to time, not to perfect time. So what we can do is we can quantize notes like these um, on the input. And we do that by clicking on this guy here, going to record style settings, um, click on that and click this box that says input track MIDI recording, uh, quantize MIDI track. So we can set the note length if we want to quantize to eight notes, uh, fourth notes, fourth note triplets, whole notes, whatever. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to take my imperfect playing and force it to match the specific time frame that I choose up here. And uh, we can choose if we want to do it to the nearest value, the previous value, or the next value, which means the nearest grid point, whichever it is, we always want to force it to the previous one or always force it to the next one. So let's turn this off for a minute. And I'm going to delete this thing, go back to the beginning. I'm going to start recording again, and I'm going to record something really simple, but uh, I'm just going to show that it's off time because I'm not a perfect keyboard player, and then we'll record it again when it's quantized. So we're going to hit the record button. So 
So we did that, and now when we double click and look at it, we can see same thing. You know, this note here doesn't quite line up with the grid, that one doesn't quite line up with the grid. None of them really do, because I'm, like I said, a horrible keyboard player. So what we can do now is, uh, what is this? Is do, 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 do. We're going to delete this, and now we're going to turn on the quantizing. And we're going to quantize it to fourth quarter notes. Now we're going to go back and we're going to record it again and see what happens. So hit the record. And now when we look at it, we can see everything is perfectly lined up at the start. It doesn't control the length of the note. Um, I think there's a way to do that later on, but what it means is that it's always on the beat. And it's basically a way to account for being a horrible keyboardist, or if you're just, you know, an incredible keyboardist, but there are little timing errors, this will kind of help smooth it out. Um, one other thing to mention is that uh, the, one of the benefits to recording with an external controller is that you can control some things in real time um, that might save you some time, whereas if you're doing it manually, it might, uh, by entering the data notes down the road, it might take forever. Like, for example, we have a pitch bend wheel on our our keyboard here, and we're going to go to something that will show the effects of this. Blaster is the first one. There we go. And we want to turn this sustain up. So that's a pitch bend wheel. It's basically a little wheel with some tension on it, and it'll it'll bend it up, usually by a whole tone or two notes, but some instruments let you control that. This one does an octave. Um, so if we record a segment with this, and we'll just record a quick little segment here. There we go. So we use the wheel at the end, and you can see it's got that little data point there. And so when we listen to it, we can open up this item, and we can look at that pitch data and see it in there. Now, we're going to, in just a moment, get into how to do all this stuff manually with the keyboard. but. One thing to notice, look at how finite and controlled that is. It's much easier to do it uh, with the keyboard, um, the MIDI keyboard, the, you know, the emu, or whatever it is you have, than to plug this note in and manually do this thing sometimes. So just keep that in mind. So now that we've talked all kinds about how to use an external keyboard, what we're going to do is talk about how to do it if you don't have a keyboard and if you don't want to use this weirdo little virtual MIDI keyboard thing, which I don't like that much. It's nice that it's there, but I don't like it. So we're going to delete this track entirely. Yes, kill it. And we're going to create a new one. And we're going to add an effect. And what we are going to do is use this Super Wave P8 effect, because I'm tired of using TV Peach. So we open this guy. This is a uh, another, I believe, free to download effect, and the link is on the screen and in the video description. So Super Wave P8, I like it. This one's got a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot more controls that you can change, um, and uh, a lot of good presets here. So let's go to uh, let's go to this here and just kind of see how that sounds. And uh, just for the sake of it, we're going to turn our keyboard back on just so I can do a little auditioning and testing here, even though we're not going to be using the keyboard. That's pretty rad. That sounds super synthy. So let's say we don't have a keyboard here, and we still want to use these virtual instruments. And you are in luck, because you can. So what we're going to do is we load our instrument. We don't have to worry about um, you know, setting up the input here, but we do want to have record monitoring on. And we're going to name this Super Synth. And instead of creating all those notes that we made with the keyboard, what we can do is we can just go to the timeline here, go to Insert, and do New MIDI Item. And this creates a blank item just like the ones we were creating with the keyboard. Now we double-click on it, and let's maximize this full screen. And let's talk about what we're seeing here for just a moment. Uh, first off, over on the left, we have a visual representation of a piano. And that is called the piano roll. This whole part here is called the piano roll, actually. But we can change this um, by going to View. And we can go to Named Notes. And this way, it just has a list of uh, basically blank tags here. And if we click on one, it'll play the, you know, play the appropriate note through the keyboard, but what we can do is we can go to File, Custom Note Names, uh, Rename Current Note, and we can type in whatever we want. This is really useful if we're doing something where um, instead of individual notes, these are controlling individual instruments like a drum 
synthesizer where this might be the kick line, this might be the snare line, then we can just enable, label it kick, snare, hi-hat, whatever. But for right now, we're going to go back to view, piano roll, because this is a tonal based instrument. Okay. Now up top here, um, we're going to have our grid lines. This represents time left to right. So this is beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. These are the sub beats. Um, and then along here, we have the notes. Down here, we have what are called our control uh, control change lanes. And what these are going to do is these are the ways to manually control all the different variables we have, like velocity, pitch, um, controlling the volume if we want to, or any, any other weirdo things like that that might be specific to the instrument. Now with these, we can use this drop down list to select whichever one we want to look at. We can click this plus button to add more of them if we want that, and then a minus button to remove them. I uh, usually only look at uh, velocity while I'm doing my programming here. None of this is any good unless we can add notes. So to add a note, just place your cursor where you want it. And when you click, it'll audition that note or play a preview. So you kind of know what you're hearing. And let's go there. So if we double click here, it'll add a note. And if we double click here, it'll add a note. And here. So all this is is just a C minor scale I'm playing through, and if we go back to the beginning and play it, it goes like that. And that's super fun, right? Now, this type of synthesizer here is the one where it'll only play the note for as long as the MIDI item actually is existing. Um, some MIDI items, all it's looking for for the note is when to start the note and it plays it for a fixed length. But with this synth, we can control how long the note is. And we can do that by stretching the length of this guy. So if we listen to it right here, it's just a little bop with the echo on it. But then if we stretch it out to here, it's... So it gives us more control over that. Um, also, if we want to move this guy, we don't have to delete it and then add a new one. We can just click it drag it wherever we want, and it'll go there. If we want to get rid of it, we can click it and hit delete, or double click it. Um, also, to insert notes here, you can right click and go to insert note at mouse cursor, um, which would be the insert button, which makes it really easy to just kind of do it like that instead of double clicking all over the place. Uh, you can also right click over here and drag to select any number of notes that you want, and then do whatever you need to them, like delete them all at once if you want to. Let's add another note here. Um, if we right click on this guy, we can go down to note properties. And from here, we can control everything we want about this note. Um, we can determine which note it is. Like right here, it's uh, row number 60, which is a C4. We could move it up to 63, which is a D sharp four. You know, we could change the velocity of it, which is how hard it's being hit. We could change the position in terms of the grid line, the length of the note. Right now, it's a quarter of a beat and also what channel it is. Now we're going to talk more about channels in a minute, but like I said, if this virtual instrument here had the ability to have multiple instruments loaded at once, we would use the channel to determine which instrument this note goes to. So we're going to hit OK there just to uh, forget about it. And then another thing we can do is let's say we've got a, a whole bunch of notes in a row here, but what we want to do is we, instead of having individual, we just have, want to make this one long continuous note. We can right click, drag across it, to select all of them, right click, go down to join notes, and it turns it into instead of like that. We can also uh, right click and go down to mute. Um, we can split notes if uh, we have a long one, like let's say we put a note in here and it's this long, but then we decide we want this to be two notes. We right click here, go to split, or actually we put our cursor here, right click, go to split, and there we go. One other thing that's kind of cool is, uh, let's build a little riff here, like... Which sounds like... That's a rad little techno -y type thing. So let's say we've got this, this whole little riff here, and we want to just select some of the notes. And um, let's say we want to... Instead of having this be the root note that we keep jumping back to, let's say we want to move it down some. We can right-click and select all those, or what we can do is uh, we can right-click on the piano key here, and it'll select all the notes in that line. Another way we can do it is just select one of the notes, and if we hit the V key, it'll select all of the same ones. So the V button will select all of them, like that.
that are the same note. So let's just right click here. Now let's say we want to move these as well as these notes. If we right click on this key here and then hold control um, and then right click on this key, it'll select all of those notes as well and we can keep doing that until we get tired and bored with doing that. Another thing, <laughs> and I know there's a lot to go over here, I don't expect you to remember it right away, I'm just kind of showing you what it can do. Let's erase this, and right now we're doing this kind of, um, this kind of, you know, 4-4 four, four quarter note type thing. Now let's say instead of 4-4, four, four, we want to have our grid be eighth notes. We could do it that way, or, you know, quarter notes, or, you know, a half, uh, whatever, you know, whatever we want. We can also change it to be from straight time to triplet time. So instead of that normal one, we could do like... where it's more of a swung time. And uh, we can also go down and change this to dotted notes and swung notes, which are different types of timing as well. Now, one thing we haven't talked about is the velocity down here, this whole control change lane. So let's say we've got this riff here. Every note here is the same hardness in length, um, and or not in length, but uh, same hardness. Um, it's the same volume, uh, the same hardness of the hit. So what we can do is we can go down here and we can manually change it. So let's say we want to have all these upper notes be super hard and then have these two always ramp back up. We can click here and adjust the velocity of these notes so that now it's doing this swelling thing. And we can change it however we want. And then let's also change this last one to be more fun, where it's uh, like that, 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 that. So it's... That's a really cool way to add some dynamic stuff to this um, and make it sound uh, less monotone in your mind and make it more interesting for the listener. Another thing we can do to make it sound less mechanical and more dynamic and interesting is humanize the notes. And humanizing is basically the opposite of quantizing. Um, let's change our grid back to the triplets here so we can look at this properly. Um, with quantizing, what we're doing is we're taking imperfect note timing and we're trying to make it perfect. And what humanization does is it takes perfect note timing like these, which are all plugged in and exactly the same length and properly placed. And what it does is it messes it up a bit, um, just so it sounds a bit more like a human is playing it. This might not be something you want to do with a really techno-y sounding synth here, but with a drum line or a piano piece or something, if everything is right on the beat every time and the same velocity, then it, it sounds mechanical. It doesn't sound real to the human ear. So if we go up to, or is it edit, and go down to humanize, we have the ability to change this. And we can choose first off if we want to humanize just the notes we've selected or all notes. And then what we have here are sliders for how much we want to humanize it. And this refers to the timing, so we can shift it so it's out of time or more in time. The velocity, which is, you know, the hardness of the hit, because a real human isn't going to be hitting everything at the same hardness every time. And then with the timing, the timing bias is going to move it more to the left or more to the right. So what we can do is we can take this passage, which sounds like... And we can go to Edit, we can go to Humanize, and let's say we just want to add a 11% timing issue and maybe 25% velocity is good. Now, as you can see, it's not quite on the beat anymore, and it's going to sound just a bit more like someone's actually playing it on a keyboard. It's a very subtle effect, but it's very important, especially if you're doing drums. If you've got a drum roll, if every drum hit is exactly on the beat, it just sounds like a machine doing it. But if you humanize it a bit, so each one's hit a little different uh, hardness and each one's a little different timing, it'll sound much more realistic. The one last thing I want to talk about with this MIDI line here is how to navigate through it. Um, in normal Reaper, the scroll wheel will increase the zoom level, but when you're in MIDI, the scroll wheel just moves up and down. If you want to increase the zoom, you have to hold Alt and do the wheel to zoom, and if you do control and do the wheel, it'll increase the size of the notes so you can see it more. So now that we've looked at all of, all of this stuff, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to do things with channels, and we're going to delete this track, yes, we're going to add a new track, we're going to arm it, we're going to record monitoring it, and we're going to add an effect that uh, is 
or an instrument rather that has multiple channels. This is the ARIA area player. Um, this is for an instrument called Garretin, Garretin Personal Orchestra, which is a uh, not not a super high end, but definitely a fun orchestra synthesizer. And as you can see up here, we've got all sorts of different channels that we can load different instruments on. So we're gonna load this first one here and we're gonna go down to the different files we have and we're gonna do section strings, full strings, and then just a full string patch. And as you see over here, this 01 is the MIDI channel and we can set that to everything 1 through 16. So that's loaded on 1 and then let's say for 2 here we're going to do a solo string or let's do a French horn. I like French horns. Cool. Now, when we go in and do our MIDI line, let's uh, insert a new item. We're going to open it. And right now, if we play this, it's not going to play both instruments. It's just going to play that first one, the strings. So let's create a thing here. And let's make it this long. And then we're going to go over and add another one and do the same thing. And we're going to listen to that really quickly. And we want to change this, so let's move this down. And we're going to make it half as long, and we're going to copy it, paste a new one here, and move it up. You can copy and paste and all that stuff with this, which is super cool. So now it's... And we're going to have two instances of this. So now we go over there, and now it'll do that twice. Now, when we want to add stuff for the next instrument, the French horns, um, we want to take a look at this note first off. And if we go down to Note Channel or the Note Properties, we'll see this is Channel 1, which means that through the instrument, it's playing the instrument on Channel 1, which is this full strings thing here. Now, if we want to add notes to Channel 2, there are two ways to do that. First, what we could do is we could just plug in all the notes, right-click on them, and change it to Note Channel 2 or we can go up here. This is a way of telling this uh, piano roll here which channels you're looking at. Right now it's set to show us all of the channels. If we switch that to channel one, it'll show this note because it's on channel one. If we switch it to this, it'll show channel two, which has no notes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're going to add these notes here. So we're gonna go like this. And now in the second part, we're going to go, and uh, we got to do it on this one too, switch to channel two. And now when we play it, or we'll delete these for now, if we look at it, these are all the channel two notes, these are all the channel one notes, and then all, it shows all of them. And we can right click on it at any time and change the channel if we want to. So the channel two notes are going to be going through this French horn patch. The channel one notes are gonna be going through the strings. And we can also change the, um, the volume and stuff here as we want to, to control those individual sounds. So now it sounds like this. Kind of like that. So that's how to do multiple channels. And if we want to make this extra fun, what we'll also do is uh, we'll right click in here and we'll, you know, or rather not right click, we'll go to edit and we'll go to humanize and we'll humanize it a bit so it sounds more like a real French hornist or horn, what do you call a horn player? I like hornist. A French hornist. A bunch of them is called a nest of hornists. But uh, that's the ins and outs of MIDI. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is show you really quickly how to do this with a basic drum program, and we're going to use Easy Drummer just because it's what I use a lot, and it's something that I think a lot of you probably have. So we go to our VST, we select our Easy Drummer, we let it load, and it's going to take a moment because it has to load all these sound samples. But in the meantime, what we can do is we can go in here, we can go to the beginning, we can insert a track, and one thing we're going to do right off the bat for this is we're going to change it from this note view to this named note view. And uh, what 
This is better because we're not dealing with individual notes so much as individual instruments. And what we can do is go to File here. We can do Customize Note Names, Load Note Names from File. And in our documents here, I have a drum map set up already that has all these different instruments listed. And that is going to be available through my website. You can download that um, from the link below and the link that is showing on the screen right at this moment. So now we'll take a look, and this thing is fully loaded, and uh, we've got different instruments going on. And um, basically now what we can do is we can plug in. We can do drum patterns like kick, snare, kick, snare, and we'll do hats. So it sounds like. And with drums especially, it's really good to mix up the velocity a bit. I like to do this kind of down-up, down-up pattern a lot of the time with it because it makes it sound more human. You know, you kind of lower the kicks when it's not on a super high beat, maybe have a bit of variation in the snare. So it sounds. And then make sure you humanize it just a little bit. 11 might be a bit much for something like this. Let's go down to 7 and uh, change the velocity a bit so now it sounds a bit more human instead of this, which sounds very robotic. And you, then you create more drum patterns and do what you want with it. So those are that's that's everything I'm going to tell you about MIDI. We're, we're looking at about 40 minutes for this video now, and if you're still watching it, um, then praise be unto thee. But uh, that should be enough to get you going. Like I said, if I missed anything, just tell me in the comments um, on YouTube or send me an email or something like that, and uh, we'll, we'll cover a bit more. Um, the one thing I know I didn't cover in this is how to do routing with a MIDI instrument, um, which is a way to send each one of these to a different track where we can apply different effects to them. But we're going to cover that in our routing tutorial, which is coming up next. So once again, thank you for attending Viking Guitar University. As always, I am Viking Guitar. And until next time, keep the world metal.